Hello everyone, so today we're going to talk a little bit about migration in Europe and some of the issues that immigrants have faced in really kind of the second half of the 20th century here. Uh, so let's get right into it. So during this time, of course, we have European just massive economic recovery and expansion. Uh, and Europe becomes a place where people want to come, especially people from former colonies or refugees, because there are really tremendous um, opportunities for economic advancement and safety as well. Now, a lot of this gets started with a, a guest worker policy <clears throat> that starts in Europe in like the 1970s due to de declining birth rates. The fact of the matter was, is Europe had a huge need for workers. And so what guest workers are? They're basically people that would be recruited from abroad to fill essential jobs and you have a variety of people going different places like in germany you get people from turkey eastern and southern europe uh many people in north africa go to france people from the caribbean india and pakistan go to britain um just by the 1980s you're looking at probably 15 million people and like 17 percent of the labor force in switzerland and 10 percent in france um of the immigrants are you know make up the labor force so this is absolutely huge and you're seeing if you look at these maps and you see the amount of people again this is from around 2015 um you're looking at massive movement and the benefits of that has been europe has been able to increase its production um you have diverse cultures that can share things with one another um you know overall gdp again of the european union has gone up significantly and uh, it also fosters, you know, transportation, as I mentioned in my European um, Union video. Uh, people, it is relatively easy to move between these areas. And for many people fleeing places like Syria or the Sudan or Somalia, it provided safety from areas that were dealing with droughts or uh, oppression, civil war, terrorism. You know, it was... It was important and it was helpful for many of these people. And a lot of it, again, for the refugees, as I see here, you're looking at numbers of refugees uh, that received applications for asylum. Um, Germany, Italy, France, Greece, UK in the front. You see a huge amount of migrants on a boat uh, getting their picture taken by a drone. And this is huge, okay? And many people have found uh, safety in this area as a result of that. However, it doesn't mean that you don't have issues for many of these uh, immigrants. In many cases, they are often unwelcome socially and politically in certain areas. We often can see them getting lower wages and less so social benefits. And they also live in concentrated areas of cities and towns. And in some cases, that can develop tension with local populations, uh, especially when many of these immigrants then start to bring family members and stuff like that. Um, because a lot of people looked at guest workers as temporary. And then when they're trying to become full-blown immigrants and staying, some people, not all, some people don't like that. Um, and in the 1950s and on, uh, you really get huge implications politically with an anti-immigrant slash nationalist feel. Um, I have three examples here. The National Front of France, which was created by Jean-Marie Le Pen. Um, the Republican Party of Germany, created by Franz uh, Schoenhuber, who actually was a former SS soldier. And the Freedom Party in Austria, created by uh, Jörg Haider. And what we and so these are just some of the the main parties these are actual political parties and a lot of their core arguments are pro nationalism and anti immigration um what are some core ideas of these groups uh massive restriction on immigration um assimilating questions in other words um some people will pledge that these immigrants will not Assimilate. Others do not want them to assimilate because they feel that their culture is lesser or or will damage the culture. Um, and we blend this with intense nationalism. Um, and it's pretty intense. I mean, in 1999, the Freedom Party in Austria got 27% of the parliamentary vote. Uh, Marine Le Pen, who took over the 
uh, lead of the um, National Front in France from her father, earned 17.9% of the vote in the 2002 French presidential election. And we see a lot of this strain going on right now. Okay. Um, and there are a variety of ways to look at it, but this is kind of the more extreme end. I think if you look at most places, they understand the value of immigration and immigrants and the way to do it properly. But you do have extremists on either side. You have some people that are like, hey, everybody can come in, whatever. And then other ones that are like, no, this is a nation for us and we are losing out culturally if these groups come in. And so it's something that we often see a lot of stress and strain. We see that in our country, in the United States of America. But, you know, we see some of the benefits, some of the economic benefits that um, immigrants bring, and they often are entrepreneurial and create businesses. Um, but you can still get some areas of the refusal of assimilation and stuff like that, which can cause cultural strain. And I don't know that it's anything that's going to be uh, settled anytime soon, but it's definitely something that is impacting Europe for many, many years. Europe really didn't have immigration. It wasn't until really the 1970s and 80s that that happened. And so with this mass amount of new immigrants and people of different backgrounds being in these nations and then being born to, you know, as the children of immigrants, we, we definitely see some new developments. All right, guys, so hopefully that just gave you, you know, a little sense of some of the things that were going on at this time. And I'll see you soon.